the major upgrades, uh, the, the major uh, modernization of the Russian military um, potential. Uh, Warsaw, and I, I, I'm sure Bucharest uh, would also would, would both have hope to have a good relationship uh, with Russia in the security sphere, but I think we are both coming uh, from the point that reciprocity and equality uh, should, be, uh, should be key. Uh, when it comes to the European Union and security and defense policy, I also would say that we are moving along a similar path, but possibly with different uh, speed. Uh, we both started uh, with feeling some reservations about the development uh, of the security and defense policy of the European Union. Uh, many uh, in, in our countries were worried that this is a way to weaken NATO, to uh, push the United States uh, away from Europe, but I think we are changing our position. Poland seems to be a little bit uh, more uh, enthusiastic uh, about making uh, CSDP uh, cooperation. Uh, so taking into account this, this long list of common interests and similarities, uh, what should be these trademarks, these flagship projects for the partnership? Uh, I propose that in the, NATO, in the NATO framework, actually, uh, one of the biggest challenges that we will face post ISAF, post 2014, uh, is to how to sustain the level of cooperation and the level of interoperability between uh, our uh, forces. Uh, as you know, in a couple of weeks' time, there would be a steadfast chess exercise in Poland and in the Baltic state. Uh, but uh, it should be in our joint interest that this is not a one-time event that we have this kind of exercises of this kind of scope and importance uh, in the territory of uh, Central Europe. Uh, so it seems that both countries could start working on uh, next major uh, multilateral uh, exercises or uh, series of exercises uh, and make it attractive to, to other uh, NATO countries, and in the meantime, indeed, uh, our armed forces should train more fre uh, frequently uh, together and should also exchange lessons learned uh, from the operations uh, in Afghanistan, uh, from the, the, the Romanian involvement uh, in, in the Libyan uh, maritime deployment, for example. Uh, the second challenge for NATO, which is uh, directly affecting both Poland and Romania, uh, is the future course of the NATO-Russia uh, relationship. Um, even though the relations are far from good, uh, to put it mildly, uh, there is work, there is internal uh, reflection in the alliance uh, about uh, how to increase the level of trust, increase the level of transparency when it comes to conventional uh, weapons, also when it comes to uh, tactical uh, nuclear weapons. I would argue that uh, Poland and Romania should not wait until there is uh, the, 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 the position of the major European countries and then uh, afterwards come uh, with our own proposals, but maybe uh, we could be more proactive and uh, formulate together uh, or with some more interested parties uh, such as Turkey uh, a common position on arms control issues uh, between NATO and uh, Russia. Uh, regarding the European Union security and defense policy, I think the common cause for Poland and for Romania uh, can be reviewing and upgrading the uh, European uh, security strategy. Uh, and both countries should do more than just support in principle uh, this upgrade. Uh, we could uh, especially uh, formulate proposals on uh, how to the challenges of the eastern neighborhood, uh, how they should be tackled in the new document, what should be said, what should be this, uh, the aims for the European uh, Union. Uh, regarding the United States, uh, I fully uh, supported this, this proposal to, to actually uh, do more on practical terms uh, to exchange not only information but also experiences uh, on uh, our experience with F-16. We very quickly learned that it's not just about the aircraft, it's not about <coughs> just about the training of the pilots, that actually you are introducing a completely uh, different 
idea for the air forces, uh, the completely different ideas for maintenance. Uh, so this is something, uh, and we learned some of these lessons very painfully. Uh, some mistakes were made, some things were not worked out. Uh, so I propose that we should share this knowledge with uh, Romania. Uh, uh, that's, that would be one thing. Uh, on missile defense, actually, you have the, exactly the, the, the uh, opposite situation. That Romania would be the first country in which it would actually start the construction of the missile defense uh, facility. Uh, so I believe our experts, our uh, specialists, would also benefit greatly uh, to, to, to witness uh, this, this practical work on the implementation uh, of this uh, uh, of this bilateral. Uh, agreement with the United States. Uh, and finally, finally, uh, the cooperation of the military uh, industries, uh, which should be paid based on information about the demands of our armed forces. Uh, as you may know, Poland is in the process of upgrading uh, our uh, military capabilities and uh, some of the numbers, they look rather impressive, uh, around 40 3 billion US dollars to be spent on military modernization during the next 10 years. Uh, air and missile defense system were mentioned, helicopters, uh, but it's also the, the training aircrafts, precision guided munition, uh, drones, uh, and a couple of other systems. Uh, so there seems to be uh, there seems to be ample room uh, for our uh, military uh, industries uh, to find also the projects in which we can cooperate together. How about a UAV, a drone, which could be constructed together by the Polish and uh, Romanian uh, companies? So, to conclude, uh, to truly deserve this name, the strategic partnership between Romania and Poland should sell it set ambitious uh, goals. Uh, the foundations are there, so let's not waste them. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much for the invitation to this uh, very interesting conference. Uh, I'm not an analyst as my colleagues because I, work, I don't work in an analytical institute, but then just a scientific institute, so it's a research and, and not a think tank. Uh, so uh, what I, I will just say is uh, some of my remarks uh, took uh, uh, during my 15 years of coming to Romania twice, or even more times a year. So, as we all know, uh, in June this year, the bilateral agreement on defense cooperation has been signed, and um, it replaced the, the former agreement, and uh, it adjusted the uh, situation between the, our two countries uh, into NATO reality, <coughs> and uh, it was a real step forward. But uh, now we should think about uh, filling this uh, this uh, treaty with um, with uh, concrete actions. Uh, what I I, I see uh, from some distance is that uh, maybe we could cooperate more in uh, uh, foreign uh, foreign missions of uh, of uh, of troops, uh, Poland and Romania. It was done some extent in Afghanistan and uh, in Iraq, uh, but uh, maybe we could uh, also uh, cooperate on more uh, close, uh, more closely with uh, Romania uh, in some prospective uh, missions, like maybe it could be um, a stabilization mission to some countries that are uh, now in trouble. <laughs> uh, a very complete action that done, I think, uh, on a bilateral uh, basis, it would be the, um, um, taking the refugees from Syria, uh, which is uh, discussed on, on, on some levels, uh, uh, on the EU level, but we could also do, do this uh, on bilateral basis, and uh, maybe in cooperation with Turkey, as uh, Mr. Chopulescu said, that uh, um, this uh, possible triangle uh, Warsaw, Bucharest, Ankara uh, is, is uh, full of, of prospective um, hopes. And there could be also some uh, common 
uh, bilateral trainings of, of groups and uh, cooperation uh, in the field of uh, data security, which is also a part of, of this bilateral agreement. Uh, I will also uh, I would like to say some things that are not directly connected to the defense. So one of the issues that we could make together uh, is the promoting uh, our vision of history uh, in Europe. Because uh, uh, the countries of Western Europe have a totally different vision than, uh, than we have. And if we work together, uh, maybe we could uh, tell our Western counterparts that we also uh, have something to say. I mean, uh, the, the things that uh, is done in, in uh, Romania by Marius Opria and, and his uh, institute and in Poland by Institute of National Remembrance, uh, if we join our forces, uh, we could uh, present uh, our uh, ideas more stronger. And uh, we could also, uh, skipping to another subject, and uh, we could uh, also take the example of the defense cooperation into economic uh, level. I mean, uh, because we, uh, the Poland and the Romania, uh, work on bilateral investment treaty that was uh, signed in 1994. And it's based on most of our nation laws. Uh, but with countries of Western Europe, Poland has uh, a higher level of protection of, uh, of investment. Uh, it's based on national treatment laws. Uh, so, uh, if we upgrade the level of, uh, of uh, the investment protection, it will be a very clear sign to the investors from Poland to invest in Romania and uh, from Ro for Romanian investors to invest in Poland. Um, so, uh, it might upgrade our level of uh, economical cooperation. Uh, second uh, idea uh, that could uh, upgrade our level is making our countries closer by, and I, I know that this is totally fantastic uh, cosmic human idea, but why not to say it, to uh, construct a highway from uh, Warsaw to Bucharest uh, through uh, Eastern Slovakia, Eastern Poland, Eastern Slovakia and Eastern Hungary and connect it to the Transylvania Highway Project. We all know that it's very hard, but why not mention it? And, uh, uh, the uh, flight connections uh, between uh, Warsaw and uh, Paris could also be upgraded by uh, adding another connections between Krakow and Paris or uh, Warsaw and Cluj and uh, also it could be done in cooperation with uh, uh, cheap uh, uh, airlines uh, because from Warsaw we can fly to almost any city uh, by cheap uh, flight but not to uh, not to Romania. 